Okay, so let me guess. You've got an Airstream base camp, it's starting to get cold out, and you want to winterize it. You want to do it yourself because it doesn't seem like that difficult of a job, or your RV dealer might be a bit of a distance away, or you just want to save the cost or save the money on spending it with the dealer when you think that you can do it yourself. It is a very simple process, so I'm going to show you today how to winterize your base camp. It's December 2nd, 2017 here in New Jersey. This is a 2018 base camp model. They brought back the base camp in 2017. So if you have a 2017 or 2018 base camp, this is going to be, this process is going to be very similar on both models. If you have a 2019 or any years past, that model hasn't come out yet. So I'm not sure if it's going to be the same as what I'm showing you, but I'm sure it'll be very similar. Okay. You're going to need a couple things to start. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll need a bit of hose and an adapter to fit onto your water pump and you'll need some RV antifreeze. Okay, so everything you need is going to be under the driver's side or roadside seating area. So go ahead and remove all of the pads and cushions from the driver's side area. So if you've never looked in the mechanicals area of your base camp, it's underneath the driver's side seat here. From the factory, it comes screwed down. So what you want to do is lift this cover here take out these two plastic pieces and unscrew the Phillips head screw that's holding this portion down. Okay, so after you've removed those screws, you'll have access to the mechanicals area. Lift this up and you can take a look at what's going on. It can look confusing at first, but I'm gonna take you through each area. Under here you have your Truma water heater, all of your inlet and outlet connections, gas hookups are all on this side. On the left side here, you have another panel you can lift out and you have access to your water pump and other mechanicals. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go over to your control panel, turn off all your water and heater systems. To do that, start up your Truma system here, use the dial to turn everything off. Just make sure that this top display has nothing in it. That ensures everything is off. Also go over to your water pump and make sure that is off too. Okay. Okay, next thing you're going to want to do is go outside and level your base camp front to back and side to side. There's two options for winterizing. If you live in the lower states and can get away with just blowing out your water lines, that's fine. I'm going to show you how to do that too. But up here in New Jersey and some of the northern states, you're going to want to completely winterize by adding the RV antifreeze in. So I'm going to show you that process as well. Okay, so first you're going to want to empty your fresh water tank. If you haven't emptied your black water tank yet, you can turn on all your faucets and let all the water drain out into your black water tank because you're going to empty your black water tank later. I've already emptied mine and I've already emptied most of my fresh water tank. So I'm going to show you how to empty your water tank completely through the low point valves instead of using your faucets and adding more water to your black water tank. Okay, let's come around the driver's side of your base camp and let's take a look underneath. You've got several pipes several valves, several drains. I'm going to explain what each one is to you. If you come around towards the spare tire, this is your hot water pressure release valve. I'm going to show you where that is inside, but if you lift that valve, that's where that's going to come out. That's what this little extension is for. Okay, so under here behind the tire, we've got several valves and pipes. The copper one here is your LP pipe for propane. That feeds propane to your water heater. This, I believe, is an air inlet pipe for your freshwater tank. So it lets a little bit of air in as water is going out of or being pumped out of your freshwater tank. Back here is your drain pipe for your hot water tank heater. We'll show you the valve inside that releases into here. Here you have your valves. Your, these are your low point valves for your hot and cold water lines. I believe this is the cold and I believe that is the hot. And here is a drain valve for your freshwater tank. Okay, so back in the airstream here, we're gonna empty out our water heater and hot and cold water lines at the same time. So to do that, we're gonna open up all of our water release points. And as we do this, if you've already emptied out your fresh water tank, you'll get a little bit of residual water, but it won't be much. So we'll open that up. Go into the bathroom area. Bring the faucet down to the floor so you don't get sprayed on. Open up the hot and cold water lines. 
outside of the Airstream, you're going to use your 751 key, open up the water tank, open that, and also open your city water inlet. Now that we've opened up all of our water fixtures, we can open up our low point valves for the hot and cold. And you can also open up the valve for your water tank. Let everything drain. So as those are draining, we're going to open up the valve for the hot water tank release. That's going to come out this pipe here, but I'll show you where the release valve is inside. Inside the base camp, open up the cover to your mechanicals area and take a look. Down next to the Truma system, you'll see a valve that looks similar to this. If you lift this valve and point it straight up in the air, it will open the valve to empty out your hot water tank. So just lift straight up. Now you can hear all the water draining out. As we come around outside, we can look underneath and you can see all the water from a hot water tank is draining out of the system. Wait until all the water from these valves has completely drained out. While everything's draining, you can come back into the base camp and do a couple other things here. You can come to the toilet, make sure you exercise this valve, let any excess water drain out of the toilet. Okay, so another area you want to take a look at is down in the mechanicals area to the left of your water pump. If you're facing the back of the base camp, you have your hot water tank's pressure release valve. That's here. There's a little valve on top of it. You want to lift that valve up, number one, to exercise it, but number two, if there's any water stuck in this pipe here, that will have drained down now. And you just want to make sure that that is back in the down position after you're done. Okay, so while everything is draining, let's take a look at some of the water systems that we have here. Here's your hot water pump. On the left side here, we have the inlet. If you go back a little bit further, you can see this is our little filter. You can clean that out. That's on the... Uh, fresh water tanks inlet that goes into the left side of the water pump that's your inlet for the water pump that's your outlet for the water pump and that goes down it splits in two directions one goes to your fixtures and the other goes over here to a valve that you can turn on or off that will allow or stop water from going into your water heater if we go from that shut off it goes in two directions. One goes to your hot water tank's pressure release valve, which we just exercised. The other side goes down around here to the other side of your Truma system and enters at the bottom of your water heater right here. At the top of your Truma system, this is where your hot water exits out of your hot water tank. Off of the Truma system's hot water outlet, you have a couple valves. The first one here is a shutoff valve so that water doesn't backflow into the hot water tank. We're going to use that later to keep our antifreeze from flowing back into the water tank. If you follow that hot water pipe down, it will come around here to the right and you'll see a mix of pipes here. The valve on the top that's your bypass valve. That's normally in the off position. What this allows is for hot water and cold water lines to be mixed. During normal operation, you don't want that to be open because what that will do is it'll allow your hot water tanks, hot water, to mix with your cold water and basically you'll get lukewarm water out of every pipe. When we're mixing in our antifreeze, we need a way for the antifreeze to reach the hot water lines. That's what this valve is for. So we will open that at the point when we're ready to mix antifreeze into the system. The Truma water heater does not recommend putting antifreeze in their hot water tank. 
The process for winterizing the hot water tank is basically just emptying it out. They also don't recommend blowing forced air into it. So once we've drained this hot water tank, we're basically going to close off the inlet and the outlet from it and then finish our winterizing steps from there. So as you can see, all the water has stopped flowing from all of these outlet points. At this point in the process, we can close up our water heater for the winter. To continue the process of blowing out the lines with some forced air, we're going to turn off the valve that allows water into the Truma water heater. That's located here. Make sure that the valve is facing perpendicular to the way the water is running. Come over here to the right side of the Truma system and we are going to stop water from coming out of the water heater. Make sure that's perpendicular to the way that the water is running. Now to get the air that we're going to blow into our city water line inlet, you want to make sure that that air gets to the hot water lines as well. So at this point we're going to change our bypass valve to allow our hot and cold water lines to mix. Now that we have the inlet and outlet valves to our hot water tank closed up, then we have our bypass valve open to open the connection between our hot and cold water lines. We're now ready to blow some forced air through our lines. To do this, you'll need a couple things. You'll need an air compressor that you can control how much pressure is coming out. You'll also need this adapter here, which goes from a regular city or hose water connection to a tire fill connection, just a regular um, just as you find on a car tire or a bike tire. You also need a normal tire fill adapter to go from the air hose to the adapter. So the first thing you want to do is attach your hose, adjust your air regulator to be right around 50. On the other end of your hose, connect your tire filler adapter. Now head over to the city water inlet on your base camp. Attach your adapter. Push your air hose onto the adapter and begin to push air into your base camp's water lines. After a while you'll hear the gurgling stop and most of your water will now be clear from the lines. Now you can remove your adapter from your city water inlet and close up all of your water lines. So we'll start here. If you only plan on blowing air through your water lines to winterize it, Airstream also recommends you clear the water out of your water pump. So to do that, you're going to remove the inlet and the outlet from your water pump lines. Turn on your water pump and uh, make sure you have a rag under there. It's only about a half a cup of water, but they do recommend clearing that out if you're just going to be winterizing with, uh, with forced air. This is RV antifreeze.
This jug comes concentrated, so you would fill water into the jug and mix it up. If you're just going to winterize using forced air, you can take antifreeze and just pour some into your tub drain and just to be safe, maybe into your sink drain too. The sink drain on the base camps are trapless, so really no water will sit in there, but it, uh, you know, there could be benefits to kind of pouring a little bit down that drain as well, but not necessary. The real important part is your tub drain, which is an actual P trap. So make sure you get some of this antifreeze in there. If you're gonna be winterizing all of the lines, like I will be, we're going to have to fill this up with water. You'll need two of these gallon jugs and you'll have to create a little adapter that we're going to put on our water pump inlet. So to make this pipe, we're gonna take our adapter. One side of it is threading for a regular water hose. Um, this is a half inch one. So your normal water hose is probably three quarters of an inch. It's a little bit smaller, but that's the, uh, that's the adapter or the thread size for our water pump. The other side, you're gonna push these barbs into a short piece of extension pipe. This one I have here is five feet. I'm going to push this onto the hose. Makes a nice tight connection. This way, one side of the hose can attach to our water pump and the other side of the hose can go into our gallon jugs of antifreeze and the water pump is going to pull the antifreeze into the water system and throughout the hot and cold lines. So here inside, I'm going to prepare the water jugs. So here in the base camp, we're going to go to our water pump. We're going to remove the water inlet and we're going to attach the adapter that we just made. So here in our water tank, again, the left side is our inlet. The right side is our outlet. You know, it's the inlet because if you follow this pipe down a little bit, you'll see the water filter that comes from our water tank. So we can release this by hand and you may want to keep a rag nearby, put that underneath in case there is any residual water left, but there shouldn't be too much because we just blew the lines out with forced air. There may be some left in the actual pump itself but that's okay. So now with that removed, we can attach the adapter that we just made. So now that we've attached our adapter to the inlet, I'm just gonna work the little kinks out of my line here. If you get a flexible hose, you might get something with a little more sidewall strength. Um, that might be better for this purpose. However, for what we're doing, this is gonna work just fine. I've run my hose out the bench area just to keep the hose from bending too much. And what I'm gonna do now is open up one of our antifreeze containers and I'm gonna stick this end of the hose down into our bucket. Make sure you go all the way to the bottom. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna close the faucets. Because I want the water to flow through in the order that I want it to go. I'm gonna start with the furthest fixture first, allow the water to run through into that fixture, and then I'll go to the bathroom and work from there. So let's turn on our water pump. You'll see our antifreeze is beginning to flow through into the water system. We can go to our faucet, turn our faucet on. I'll start on the hot side and we will wait until we see the antifreeze flowing through. Now we can see the pink. Let's go down to the cold side. You can see we've gone clear. And now pink again. Shut that off. Just double check your water line, make sure you're not getting too kinked up. 
If you invest in a little bit of a stronger hose, you really won't have this issue. Now you can see pink is flowing out nicely. We'll go into our bathroom. We're going to flush our toilet. You see we got pink already. Just want to make sure that a little bit of the antifreeze will stay in the toilet. Next we're going to do our shower faucet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually place a bucket in the bottom of the shower floor. Airstream recommends you remove all of the antifreeze from any of the fixtures or any of the surfaces. So by doing this, I don't have to clean up so much around. I'll just actually empty the antifreeze into the bucket and then I'll empty the bucket into the drain hole to fill the peat drop. So we'll turn the one side on. Got pink. Other side on. And pink. So what we've done, we've actually winterized the base camp with one gallon of antifreeze. So with the second gallon, I'm going to let a little bit additional water uh, flow through the pipes. And I'm also going to get some more into the drainage system and down into the black water tank. So now I'm going to pour more of this antifreeze down into the drain. Just to fill the peat trap and to get some into our black water tank. So now that we've used the second gallon of antifreeze, that is now in the water line system and also down into the black water tank. It'll just add a little bit of extra protection and ensure that anything that was possibly left in the black water tank uh, definitely won't freeze. And what we'll do now is remove our adapter and reattach our water inlet pipe. Okay, so make sure that you keep your rag under here to catch any excess antifreeze. So now we'll reattach our water inlet. You just want to be very careful here. You want to make sure that you get these threads lined up perfectly because the last thing you want to do is damage these plastic threads and have to get a new water pump. So you will not need to force it. So if it starts to get difficult to turn, stop, back it off, and then try again. So these you can tighten, let's say 8 to 10 pounds of force. You definitely do not want to bottom them out, but you want it to be nice and snug. So get it to a point where there's a little bit of, where it just feels like you're working hard to tighten it up and leave it right there. Dry up any areas where antifreeze or water had leaked out. And that's it. Wipe up your shower area. Just clean the antifreeze off. Do the same in your sink area. Clean the excess antifreeze out. 
So that's it, we've winterized the base camp. There's a couple other things that you have to do. Number one, if you have a water-based battery, you're gonna have to remove that from the base camp, bring it inside, attach it to a trickle charger. If you have solar panels, your base camp came with an AGP battery. That's a gel-based battery. And those don't have to come out. Those can stay in during the winter and your solar panels will actually trickle charge them uh, throughout the winter so you can leave those in place. Um, I hope that this has helped you guys out. I hope that this gave you the tools you need to winterize your base camp yourself and also taught you a little bit about how the mechanicals in your base camp work. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the spring and I'll show you how to de-winterize. All right, thanks again. See ya.